Well, see, that's that's why I told everybody when they said, "How do I retain this?" You don't. It and is. I, it, I, it, I, I just know that I understood it, every bit of it. I understood what you needed. I knew where you had to go. But you see, the Bible is written like that. The Bible will reach every person that picks it up according to what they need. And with me putting out information, okay, about God, it, 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 all of my information is about God and the things of God and the ways of God and the power of God all of that Okay, uh, it is God who decides who will hear it and as far as retaining it I had told you long ago it is never retained by your memory see we've all been indoctrinated to memorize it get it in there get it in there yeah, listen to it and get it in there get it in there it, it, but it's dead it is it does nothing it doesn't you you've rendered it dead because you it's not real it's you're trying to force something into you claiming well you're doing it because you love it well you don't love it you, it's the flesh uh, so then God comes along and he's real and he's alive and so he starts pouring out himself into you and you start doing the same thing you always did and I don't mean you Ruthie I mean everybody and and they start thinking how am I going to retain this I've heard people say that to me huh, how in the world am I going to retain this well you you can't it's impossible if you're going to retain it by the flesh, forget it. If you're going to, you can take those videos and listen to them over and over and over and trying to retain it by your flesh and you're still not going to do it, get it done. Because they weren't intended to feed your flesh. They weren't intended intend, to feed your mind. They were intended to feed your spirit. And, and then you want, that's when you understood that what you needed would be brought to your remembrance. And I told you that I referred to you as a scholar because you were able in your physical flesh to remember things that I could never pick up and remember. Yeah. You see, and that's why I, I listen to you and I think, wow, Lord, she could do what I can't do. I can't do that. I don't have it in my memory, my physical memory. I don't have the the brain that operates that way. I have it by experience in the, in the spirit. And you, you have the other part of it that I need. So therefore, when God put us together, then I was able to glean from you certain realities that I had never reached had I not met you. 
had I yeah had I not met somebody that I trusted because your understanding of the word okay was not only scholarly uh, it was real in a reality of God that you hadn't even come close to knowing yet and every day you grow into it uh, through experience in, in experiencing the living God whereas yes. before it was only the word of God and you and you had a love for it uh, but whenever you t- uh, that's how many times I'd call you and I'd say uh, Ruthie uh, what do you know about this and you would tell me and I m- my mind would be boggled and I'd say Lord she remembers every word of that and I'd say how is that uh, she, she's a person that studied. I said, you know, Lord, I couldn't study. You wouldn't, you know that when you found me, my mind was not capable. My, 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 I was not able to do what other people were able to do. That's why I cried out to God for so many, for a couple of years to be normal. Because I watched everybody do what I couldn't do. But see, God come along and said, I'll fix that. <laughs> You know, I'll, I'll fix that. And he did. And that's like he said, write the book. I'll take care of the rest. I'll do what you need to have done. Don't you concern yourself about none of it. So the fact that I didn't make a penny on that book, okay, the, the fact of that, I don't sit down and go, oh, God, where's my money? Oh, God, why don't I have a penny? I'm sitting there happy that everybody's getting it. People are buying it. Yes, very good. And like you said, yeah, the Lord, hey, why should you worry? He said, he's the one who told you, hey, you don't need no lawyer. <laughs> yeah. I like he's, he's the one that said, you don't need anything. I, that <laughs> The angels that appeared in us. And I, this book that I'm writing, I have a big thing on angels. And, and when that angel said to me, you don't need anything we are going to take care of it all we have been sent from the throne of god to take care of this and so he knew he was telling me about my book and my books and how i didn't have anything from them none whatsoever from from no direction i mean barnes and nobles put this other guy on barnes and nobles to go against the book and, and let him sit there on, on the video to trash me. And the Bible says, uh, not the Bible, but what I heard was, is that's against the law. See, for you to take somebody and trash them like that. And they even put them on the internet. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, should I do something? And God says, no, you don't need a lawyer. Uh, See? No, yeah. I'll take care of it. Well, I looked it up, and it says nobody's allowed to do that on the Internet. Nobody's allowed to sit down and trash them the way I was trashed before all of these witnesses. They're, it's, you know, legally, they could, well, you know, this person does this to other people, so somebody's going to get upset. I don't know, but it ain't going to be me because I already forgave them. You see what I mean? I I, I'm yes. I'm living in a place where I'm not asking God to go do nothing to him. <laughs> I'm not asking God. I'm not waiting on God to do anything. So when we say, well, God's going to take care of it, that doesn't necessarily mean God's going to do anything to harm them. I'm not, I don't think like that. That don't come to my mind. Right, 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 right. No, that's right. No, he's going to take care of whatever concerns us. And that's what you mean. He's, I mean, he's going to make it right. That's what I mean. He's going to turn that around and make it right because he's obligated to do that. That's his promises to me. That's right. But the process, it's like God comes and heals you. Can you tell him how he's going to heal you? Can you say, well, I don't want my healing this way. I want it this way. (laughs) Can you do that? No. You know, I, t- I told you about the one woman that sat in a service crying like crazy. She had breast cancer. There were three women that had breast cancer. Two of them died. She was the one still alive that God had healed her. But he used a doctor to do it. 
She had reconstructive surgery, but she was sitting there well and alive, but bawling like a baby. And I said, what's, what's the matter with you? She says, why didn't God heal me by miracle like he did you? And, and I said to her, but he did. It was by a miracle. Because whether he uses a doctor or he uses medicine or he uses anything, it's a miracle. It's a miracle that he caused and performed to make sure you're alive. And there you are crying because you didn't have it your way. <laughs> have it your way. Yeah, and, and don't think for a minute that when I was completely healed of cancer, that I didn't cry that others weren't. You know, I, I used to, I used to hurt so, so bad that I was still alive and others weren't. Oh, I've heard of that, the survivor's guilt thing that people talk about. Yeah, well, why is well, it's it, it it wasn't even that. It's just, uh, I didn't, see, you're a thinker. Remember me telling you you're a thinker? I'm not a thinker. I, okay. I, I go by emotions. So my thinking doesn't say, why did I survive? I didn't go there. What it went to was the feeling is they're dead and I'm alive. Why did they have to die? See, that's that's as far as my thinking went. My thinking didn't go any further than that. Remember me telling you that I'm, I'm not a deep thinker. <laughs> uh, well, you have ever have me fooled. <laughs> Spiritual stuff is deep thinking. <laughs> yes, but that is God's mind. That's not mine. Yes, okay, okay, I see. Uh, yeah, well, you know, put on the mind of Christ who thought it not robbery to be equal with de- God. You know, yeah. that's when we put on the mind of Christ. I mean, he tells you, put it on. Well, how do you put it on? They don't, t- they tell you, put it on. They tell you, put the, on the helmet of salvation. They don't tell you how to do that. <laughs> how do you, how do you put on something that you have? How do, how do you put on the helmet of salvation? You just remember you're saved. You, you, your mind and your heart knows you're saved. That's how you got it on. You're shielded. Your shield of faith shields your mind that you know that you have God. It's not a physical thing, but everybody imagine, well, imagine that you have the helmet of salvation on. Imagine that your feet are shod with the gospel of peace. No. Well, yeah. listen, the gospel of peace is your gospel. Is it the gospel of peace that you could have peace between you and God? Is it the what? Is the gospel that you preach where you can have peace between you and God? Well, you can have peace between you and anybody. I mean between you and God. That's the gospel of peace. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Uh-huh. Prince of peace. He brings peace to your mind, you're saved. He brings peace to your mind, you'll be healed. He brings peace to your mind that you'll be delivered. He brings peace to your mind, I don't need a lawyer. <laughs> Excellent, yes. Uh-huh. He be, you know, do you know, Ruthie, those that have peace have healing power? Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yes. I was going to do a video on that, uh, the the peace. Remember me telling you being in the hospital, and I had allergic reaction to pain medication. Yes. In having that allerg- allergic reaction to pain medication means I couldn't take it. I couldn't take morphine. I couldn't take oxycodone. I couldn't take none of them. I, some of it made me comatose. I almost didn't come out of it. Scared them half to death. I had so many allergies to pain medication, even ibuprofen. I could, I can't take ibuprofen. Even Tylenol, I cannot take more than two. I get a reaction when I take three. I have to only at the absolute most. So, I, so if I ever have any pain, I take one. My body won't tolerate it. 
because I had been through so many operations, had so many drugs put in me, that my, my body was developing allergies. And so when I had that pain, and it was excruciating, I mean, I've got a zipper down my chest. I had just had my, my uh, ribs broken and, and spread apart to get to my heart and put it on a table. I had just been through that. And I'm laying there, and there was no peace to the pain. None. And that's what I yelled out. I mean, I yelled it, and I know everybody heard me. And I told him, I said, God, you healed me and took me off my deathbed with cancer. You healed everything else. I know you have the power to bring this pain, the, the pain in this body, to bring my body to peace. And instantly I, I passed out and I fell asleep. It was instant. Yeah. Well, because he's the Prince of Peace. The person who has peace can look at that storm and say, Peace be still. Because you have peace. You have the Prince of Peace inside of you. That's right. So he calms the storm. You have a storm coming against you where somebody is after you and you have that storm. You can say, Peace be still. You can keep them from your door. You can take a look at COVID. And you you could take a look at it, and you, and I see it in the spirit. I see all the germs, all the viruses, and I see when they're on the move. You can say to that, "Die, command those things to die," and they will. They won't be able to come near you. They won't be able to come near your neighborhood. Come near, can come near your home. Come near your husband. You can command it. You can say, "Die. This this virus will die." But what does everybody do? They run to the doctor. They're afraid. Oh, he got this scent, and I got this. Oh, I feel this. Oh, if, oh, what am I going to do, Lord? I, I caught it. And you become afraid. And I told you, it jumped on me. My husband got that uh, pneumonia, and they're, they're getting re- ready to, uh, the ambulance is on its way. And he has bacterial pneumonia not a virus and they were just closing the doors that day of the emergency room where they were no longer going to let people in the hospital through the emergency room the next day it was all closed and as he I'm getting ready to go to the hospital with him which I found out I wasn't allowed to go they no longer let you ride with your spouse and and so I had to uh my neighbor praise the lord i'm watching the ambulance leave and suddenly i turn around and somebody's standing next to me and she says uh i'll take you and i'm I'm going wow i didn't even ask her she came right there god's god will take care of it see And, and and so just before the ambulance came covid jumped on me and every symptom of COVID, very severe, hit my body from head to toe. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuked it instantly. And it was gone. And then pneumonia came and jumped on me. The pneumonia he had. And it jumped on me. And I rebuked it. So those two things, I rebuked with no problem. So... Wow. Why, why is it when you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you claim to be filled with the Holy Spirit, why is it that you can't do that? And why is it that you're not praying for the nation when you hear, oh, another virus is coming, they're going to do it. How come you're not praying to stop that? Right, very good, yeah. And I, that's where I said everybody lets it go by. Well, they hear this on the news and they hear that and they're so used to it. They're so desensitized to what is needed. They're just absolutely desensitized. They see, oh, this problem over here, you know, it's poured out over there, and they had this train wreck, and they had this. 
when they say, oh, well, I'm praying for them. Oh, really? What are you praying? And you know, a lay me down to sleep prayer is one that puts you to sleep and them to sleep. It has no power because you don't have an active living God inside of you. Oh, you have the word and and the word is real and alive, but you've killed it. You, you don't want to walk in that. Why? You're supposed to repeat it and repeat it and beg for it. You don't want to walk that way. Why those people who think that God is, ha, does miracles the way he did before, why, they're crazy. Well, okay, when you get sick, go down in the grave. If you want to believe, <laughs> have at it. Because if you don't want to take the word the way it is, and then you lie. And you say, I denied the word. I Because you take my words and you twist them. Anybody can take the word of God and take it out of context. Anybody can take your works and take them out of context. Anybody can twist up everything you say and say, well, she did this. And he said that. Why do you think I don't personally touch people? Because Paul the Apostle said... We have the power to lead people around. He says, don't we? He says, but I don't do that, lest it happen to me. Well, that tells you right there, there is a law, a principle that God has. What you do unto others will be done unto you. What you think that you have power and authority over, you think that you're going to expose this one with the word. You're going to expose them. Guess what? You're going to be exposed. But when God does it to you, it's going to hurt you because you see you cannot take God and deliver God up to Satan. But you, you can be delivered up to Satan. And I don't have to be the one to do that. So I am just saying... And what I've been saying, for people to be careful of who they target, what they think, and what they feel when it comes to judging others. And people will actually say to me, well, then what about righteous judgment? Well, when you get to a place where you know enough that you could sit down and say, well, I am righteous. I have Jesus Christ, and he is my righteousness. But when I'm at home, I talk to my little girl like she's a devil. I treat her like a piece of garbage because she is not going to expose to everybody what I do privately in my home. You see, where I can go out there and I could preach the hellfire and brimstone, come down off the pulpit and punch my wife in the mouth. Ah, you know, that kind of uh, person. Oh, but he had righteous judgment. He was allowed to judge, and he did. Oh, believe you me, he did. He's dead now, but he did He did judge people. And he got together with the local preachers who cried all the time. Oh, God, he can't be free of lust. What is the matter? We just don't understand. Oh, God, we pled the blood over him. We begged you. Oh, set him free. He didn't want free. He wanted to use you to set him free, but he didn't want free. He loved, loved what he was doing. That's it. That's it right there. That's right. He didn't want free. <laughs> when you when you have a demon that lusts after everything, you love it. You love it. That's exactly because he right. because it would never dwell within your heart and your mind if you did not, you were not in agreement with it and enjoying it. That's it right there. The agreement too. Two cannot walk together lest they be agreed. So when you're doing that, who are you lying to? Are you lying to God? Are you deceiving him? Oh, you might have 50 people, 100 people, millions of people that you deceived. You might in secret be doing some of the worst sins in secret. But you've got all these people that send you money. 
all these people that do this stuff for you and show you, oh, what a tremendous pastor. What a tremendous. And you got your wife teaching. But you, you like men. You don't like what you sleep with. You force her into submission because you like men. Whew, that is, to me, that's scary. Because in, in the ultimate of it, you really think you got God's number. You really think, you really believe just what Satan believes. He's going to sit on the throne of God and be just like God. And that's what, yeah, <laughs> he forgot. He forgot he's a created being that has limits. Yes. He forgot that he can never overcome his creator because his creator knows what he made. Just like man, he can never, ever sit on the throne and be God. And you can lie all you want and say, well, God gave this power and authority to me. Yes, he did. But he didn't give it to you to use for self. Puff yourself up and judge the innocent. And you know who the innocent are? They're the people that don't know what you know. They're the people that never heard what you've heard. They're the people that have no understanding for you. Oh, yeah, they're sinning. Oh, yes, they're sinners. But when they hear the truth, they're going to run to God. You know why? Because they know they're sinners. But you, oh, no, you're not a sinner. Oh, you can live like a demon out of hell in private, but you're not a sinner. Well, what are you then? If you're not a sinner, what are you? Ah, I know what you are. You're a hypocrite. <laughs> Woe unto you, you scribes and Pharisees. Oh, maybe that's why I like Matthew so much. I know. I know. I hear you. I know when you're talking about that these last couple of days on videos and stuff because we've talked about that before. Yeah. I Oh no, I couldn't I couldn't get enough of it. I couldn't I was so thirsty and so hungry. I could not get enough. Mm. You know, after I was filled with the Holy Spirit and that whole year and the next years to follow and it just turned my life around and all I thought I was okay before that, but <laughs> see that's how we are. How lame could I be? But um uh, I, yes, again, the hunger and thirst for his word, and it, and it, of course, was so new now because it was the living word in a whole different way. And, and it also, he, it activated all those uh, things and those seeds, those wonderful things that were put into me as a child at, by memorization. See, my grandmother, my old southern grandmother, um, uh, sat me on her knee, and we did that for years upon years. And and of course, I didn't have a lot of understanding about it, but it was there. And I and a lot of that word did outwork. I was very kind, did unto other, you know, things within my childhood and the way I operated was directed by the word in me. But oh boy, yeah. And so, but a lot of it was even beyond my years because I would memorize books and all the letters that Paul, all of Paul's <laughs> letters and all of those things. And so it was in there kind of lying dormant for the, the days that the Lord, yeah, <laughs> energized me and brought me to life. And, and then he still is doing that same thing. All those things that were in there that I, I knew on paper, uh, like the letter of the word, um, now uh, they become life and outwork from me, like the living, yeah, Jesus is the living word. Anyway, I, I marvel all the time that my grandmother did that, and um, and my other two sisters didn't take to it. I think they, they learned some of it and did enough for Sunday school, like uh, we will report to Sunday school and do some memory verses, but uh, it didn't take root. I guess that's the good ground or the whatever if you're good ground or not but but the lord had that in store for me from 
from you to put it there. Not that I walked it out or understood it or lived it <laughs> all, but it sure did keep me. And that means Jesus kept me all those years when I was off the rails, but I wasn't off because he was right there. <laughs> I deluded myself, but, but he knew. Yeah. You know, uh, Ruthie, I, I think about the couple that the one woman tried to get to get saved that that uh because they were of a different religion they were catholic she was positive they would never be saved okay and yet when i walked into their presence uh what come out of my mouth shocked even me because i had no idea what i was going to pray and and immediately uh i found myself saying lord you were with us when this happened you took care of us when that happened. You pulled us through this, and you pulled us through that. And they're going, yes, Lord. They remembered all of that. I didn't know that. Oh, it's so beautiful. And yeah. and uh, and I'm uh, and what I'm saying is 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 it? God has a remnant that is spread out all through these different religions that he's calling them out and saying come out from among them be ye a separate people because that doctrine hinders you that doctrine keeps you from seeing god and then he's telling them to be sanctified means to separate for a while to be made holy but you see they get the scripture from the church saying if you separate even a little bit from the church then you're sensual and devilish and, and yeah, and and they take that, and they forget that in even in the Old Testament, how the prophets had to separate from the church because of the noise of the people, meaning that whatever the people were thinking, feeling, saying, or doing, they could feel that as prophets, and that hindered them from hearing the voice of God. So they had to separate and be by themselves, like with. The, right. like like the woman that that uh, whose husband is is gone and he'll be gone for a couple more days but her whole life changed her thinking her feeling her abilities everything changed with him out of the house yes. you see this dark blanket that fell on top of her that told her she'll never be nothing never have nothing she'll never get up he criticized everywhere she went everything she did everything she touched he criticized it and hated it and and there he is gone and suddenly she has peace like she has never known that's a big eye opener I know exactly what you're talking about. I guess you would. Yeah. <laughs> of course you would. But, but anyway, and it wasn't like, oh, I'm glad he's gone. No, no, no. But I remember one time even telling Courtney when she was seeing I, uh, or, or hearing more of the spiritual things come out of me after her daddy died, and, we, and I was seeing her way more as she came right more. She came to my side. Uh, well, she and Josh both, but uh, especially her. Go back. 
make sure he's doing all right and this, that, and the other. Well, the Lord says, no, come here, come sit before me, you know. And so I had a harder time doing that when Fred was there. But although Fred would go out of the house every day and still work, and so I was really loving that. And I had my, my whole house, my kids were gone and everything, so I had my house to myself. I'm going to put it back on here. Okay, let me let me put the topping on what you're saying, okay? It's in the scriptures. It is where you the two of you separate to fast and pray. Oh, wonderful. That separation I've always taught. That separation is very important because the two of you are one-minded. The two of you together are one flesh. And when you separate by permission, is what he says, and fast and pray, you discover what he's thinking and what you're thinking. You're, you discover what is him and what is you. And he discovers what is you. You see what I mean? So yeah, that's you, why you separate. You put that in that perspective for me. I really like that. Yes. That's right. So that's why you separate. And there are times in your life that you need to separate because sometimes you have a doubt about certain things and you don't understand why you're feeling that. And it could be because it, there's a misunderstanding somewhere. And so the only way you can find the truth is when you separate. Separate for hours or separate for days. It doesn't matter however you choose because some fasts are so completely powerful Whenever you fast, where you pray the whole time, you're you're communicating with God when you're fasting, where you shut off the telephone, shut the door, don't let anybody disturb you. There's nobody else there but you and God. And I'm telling you what, that 15 minutes that you have has more power than the person that fasts for six weeks by denying a certain thing. Because... Because they don't understand. They're not even praying. Oh, I'm fasting. I'm fasting. I don't know. I think sometimes even my inability where I, I don't sleep very much is is a fast. Hey, I'm with you on that one. You know, because it's a deprivation of the rest and sleep. Yes, and the flesh. And putting it down so the spirit. And, yeah. yeah, and it's a... and Because he calls me in the middle of the night and said, come here. Uh, <laughs> I'll hear this, knock on the door, and I'll go, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> My body goes, oh, why now, Lord? <laughs> Please, let me sleep first. And, he, and he'll say, he'll say, come here, come here. I, I want to talk to you, come here. And I have to get up, and I go. And if it's in the middle of the night, that's too bad. <laughs> That's right. Well, you're a real pro at it these days. You do it a lot. So, yeah, put that, keeping that flesh under. But you're right. That, that's a fast. And, you know, that 15 minutes, again, it comes up, that stretching of time, the way the Lord does. Yes. It, Just it's like 15 minutes like that, that woman did who has to homeschool. Yeah, well, you know, you know what she wound up doing? She wound up. The next time I went into her house and saw her, she was spending two hours every morning with God. Oh, there you have it. He's so gracious. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, because at first she thought, 15 minutes? Well, I don't even have 15 minutes, man. I'm getting the kids up there. Um, yeah, homeschooling. I'm going to two jobs. When can I ever sit before the Lord? Yeah. Well, she did her 15 minutes, and look what she did with uh, it. I even told her, make an appointment at this certain time. You're going to come to him. You make appointment with doctors. You make appointments with everybody else. Make an appointment. Say, Lord, I'll meet you at a certain time. What a good way to put that. You make appointments with everyone else. Hey, you don't stand up your doctor if you made an appointment. That's a good point, Marion. Yeah, but, the, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh but but I'm saying that those are different things that you can use, uh -huh. and and it it makes it real to you. Hey, I'm going to be in the presence of God at that time. Yes, it does. It brings it right into the present reality. Yeah, right. and uh, un, unless you're walking and talking with Him every minute, you need those appointments. <laughs> Here 
friend who loved the Lord but didn't have a plan, didn't know, didn't understand. And and this is such a wonderful practical thing that you you put forth here. Yeah. Hey, fifteen minutes. Start with the Lord first. Give Him this time. Honor Him. Put Him here. And, and yeah. And and be faithful like He's faithful. Meet your appointment and see what He will do with that. And it's such a good place to start. And uh, yeah, see. We're you- also that's wonderful, practical. See, here's what you said. You said, see what he will do with that. Do you know how many times he's knocked on my door and said to me, come and see what I am doing. Come and see what I have for you. Come and see. And that's what you just said. 